Hey everybody, welcome to a new installment, I know it's been a while, a new installment of the Cartoon Flashback. You know, this is an installment that everybody's been asking me to do for almost the past couple of months. And so I've decided to finally do it and finally give you, give these people what they wanted. So in this installment of the Cartoon Flashback, we're going to take a look at this series. A series is part of the Hannibal Barrow Library, and it's a series that has become a cult favorite among fans for the past two decades. Almost. Almost two decades. And that is the SWAT Cats. That's right. The show The SWAT Cats originally aired in 1993 on ABC television, believe it or not. <laughs> Now, just like with some animated series at the time, it had a couple. Of, it, only, it only had about two seasons. The only difference between it and some animated series at the time was the fact that its openings were a little bit more different. The first season was sort of an opening to kind of establish who the characters were. The opening for the second season gave you a new, more rock instrumental version of what you saw, as well gave you more highlights from uh, from episodes in that season and previous episodes. But what was even more different about this is when you take a look at the character designs themselves, some of the characters were actually designed to be more humanoid than to look more humanoid than average cats. I mean some of the cats, like well the SWAT cats themselves and some of the other characters did look like the feline counterparts, but then you take a look at certain characters, like some of the allies, and they look more human than they did, well, cat. <laughs> but anyway, what was the premise of this series? What was the premise about the SWAT cats? Well, the premise about the SWAT cats was real simple. Here you had two cat. The two main characters were Jake Clawson and. I'm trying to think of the other guy's name. J oh yeah, Jake Clawson and Chance Furlong. Basically, Jake and Chance were once part of the Enforcers team. Basically, uh, the city, which is called... Um, I'm trying to see here. Mega Cat City. Which is basically the Mega Cat City's version of the police force of the police force. So anyway, in this series, apparently, we see this later on, I believe in the second, in the first season, maybe the second season, we find out through flashbacks that the SWAT cats basically were, well, Jake and Chance basically had, I guess you could say, outshined and outmaneuvered or did something. Basically, they took, basically, they got all the glory for capturing uh, someone that Commander Farrell, who's one of the uh, characters in the series, wanted to capture himself. So basically they were the other ones that not only captured the guy, but in the process I guess made Commander Farrell look like a fool. And also the fact that they damaged Enforcer Headquarters or is in the process. Now it has been noted throughout the series run that the characters Jake and Chance uh, they both acknowledge the fact that the be them being kicked out of the Enforcers was not their fault, and that it was not their fault, and that Farrell should take the blame as well. Well, as punishment for what they did, they went from being Enforcers to being in charge of a junkyard in Mega Cat City. However, because of some of the junk that was dropped off. Both decided that they still wanted to prove they had what it takes to protect the city and prove to Feral that they could still be a they could still help out. So what do they do? Well, Jake being the more Jake and Chance kind of be engine being engineally engineally inclined, I believe Jake being more of the inventing type, um, decided to take the junk that they found um, and build some 
new weapons, build some new vehicles, and thus they ended up donning some new attire, new identities, and became the SWAT cats. Jake Clawson became Razor, and Chance Furlong became, well, Tebow. Now here was the thing about this. Here was the thing about this series. The SWAT cats were already friends with a couple of characters, apparently in the series, but became more friendly. One of the characters that they became friends with was named Callie Briggs, the deputy mayor. In other words, the one that's in charge or helps the, the mayor in charge of the city out with his decisions. And Callie Briggs, it is kind of acknowledged, has a crush on Jake Clawson, even though she doesn't know Jake is Razor. She's sort of like, I guess you could say, the April O'Neil of, of the show. She's trusted, the, the SWAT cats trust her with the, not, well not their secret identity, but trust, basically trust her to know when they're telling the truth and when they're trying to help out. Anyway, anyway, Here's the situation on that. Anyway, here's the situation. Callie actually makes a lot of decisions, like I said, makes a lot of decisions for the mayor. And she has the trust of the SWAT cats. That's when they, when she, because they, she knows, because they know that she will believe what they say sometimes, if not most times. What she doesn't know is the fact that both SWAT cats have a crush on her, both Jake and Chance. But again, like I said, it's only acknowledged that, so far it's only acknowledged or hinted at, the fact that she has a crush on Jake. Although she's in trouble, the SWAT cats are right there in a second because she has some kind of an alarm system, some kind of beep or whatever, to acknowledge when she needs help. Now, the other thing about the series is it introduced, it had a variety of villains, if you will, a variety of villains. Some that, some stuck out, some were introduced right off the bat and some weren't. One character that was introduced right off the bat, that was Dr. Viper. Basically, Dr. Viper took this uh, cat, if you will, this cat bug, I can't think of his name, in the very first episode that was shown, and mutated him into a mindless monster that had the ability to kind of split into different basically split himself into di different versions or basically multiple basically he was able to multiply himself if he was destroyed other characters that stuck out were the metallic cats the metallic cats were basically known as Mac and Molly Mage the Mage Cat and basically they had escaped from, I guess, the Mega Cat version of Alcatraz. But by doing so, they were hit by a boat and the bodies were literally destroyed. Basically, the brains were still functioning, but the bodies were incapable of doing anything else. So they were saved by another SWAT Cat ally called Professor Hinkle. However, the Metallic Cats did not appreciate, I mean, they appreciated basically him bringing them back. But they showed the real gratitude by stabbing the professor in the back and using the new uh, powers or the new abilities, the new strengths to their advantage and renamed themselves the Metallic Cats. Another character that really sticks out is the main, one of the main villains. He's sort of like the dark side of the, of the, of the show called Dark Cat. And he's basically like the master villain. And he's the one that in the season one finale is able to get is able to bring together the Viper and the Metallic Cats to work with him. Now, the series did, like I say, rank, run for two seasons, and they had a lot of great adventures. They had some new characters, new villains introduced, as well as some new characters. In the second season, Commander Farrell, who's had basically throughout the first season and the second season, had an issue with the SWAT cats, even though he would work with them if necessary. If necessary. 
had a niece introduced in the second season called Felina Farrell, or Lieutenant Farrell. And she is basically a tough girl on the Enforcers. He's even acknowledged this in one of the episodes of season two. And she's only, and she's one of the Enforcers, and not the only Enforcer, that actually, like Callie Briggs, trusts the SWAT cats and believes that they're here to help and not hurt anybody. Also, it's been sort of acknowledged, not on screen, in, but sort of in many ways by the fans, and I guess hinted at in some ways, that she might have a little bit of a crush on Tebow. That's right, Chance. Overall, the series did actually quite well for the past, for those two seasons. However, again, just like another show that I've talked about, Sonic Sat AM, when the show ended its second season, it wasn't given a third season. The third season, I guess, would have been a little bit more darker and brought back some characters that were only brought in for one-shot appearances. Characters like uh, Turmoil and uh, a few others. In fact, there's one character that got possessed by um, some kind of a ghost jester or something like that. And he took all these main... And he took the... Uh, uh, the uh, SWAT cat versions of David Letterman, he took Callie Briggs and I think the mayor and captured them in this uh, thing, this sort of like big square box, and shrunk it down. Basically he considered them like the king, queen, and jester of, of, of that modern era. Oh yeah, and there was another character too that was very intriguing, although he didn't really team up with anybody except for the Metallic Cats, and that was the Passmaster. Passmaster, of course, was a being from an ancient time, and I think in one of his first appearances, mistaked Callie Briggs as his long lost bride. So anyway, the SWAT Cats, again, although it only ran for two seasons, just like another series that I mentioned, Sonic Sat AM, were planned to, definitely were planned out to have three, another season. But unfortunately, they were not given that, and again, this season would have brought back a lot of characters, and probably would have been a little bit more darker, from what I understand. But overall, throughout the past decade and a half, it has developed a huge cult following, to the point that you go on the YT, the Daily Mo, anywhere, Facebook might even have a group, Yahoo groups have them, people have their own websites, everybody likes this show, because it's one of those shows that just stood out, and wasn't your average anamorphic funny comedy show it was more it was taken more seriously and more and it was more darker than any of those that's why shows like this Sonic Sat AM and even Biker Mice stand out as some of the best they have or some of the best given in the early to mid 90s so will this show ever make a comeback maybe maybe not will this show be considered as possibly one of the motion picture adaptions in the future many fans hope so but it continue, but until then, it'll just have a legacy on VHS, in torrents, YouTube's Daily Motions, and anybody that probably has it on DVD. But that is, but that is it for my cartoon flashback episode featuring the SWAT cats. Hope you all liked it. Hope you all liked it. Comment on the bottom if you like to. Tell me what you think. And I will talk to you all later. Thanks for tuning in to this new episode and installment of the Cartoon Flashback.